<laughs> That's that dopeness. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch Fear the Walking Dead, stop listening now, major spoilers, here we go. Tonight's episode was called Not Fade Away. Today is September 20th, 2015, and let's get right into it. Madison and Travis see different sides of the National Guard's occupation in their neighborhood. The family tries to adapt to the new world. Okay, so here's my notes, so you can hear all that. <laughs> it's pretty much just one page, front and back. Um, tonight I was actually just paying attention to what the hell was going on because this right here is another 10 out of 10 star episode. Right now I got a perfect season right now and I'm hoping that they continue going that way. Um, nine days since the lights were out, okay, since power went out, since, um, you know, we lost control of the civilization, since civilization crashed. And you get introduced, um, to this brand new... Uh, martial law world, okay? The military has taken over um, the city, okay? They've occupied the neighborhood. Um, this isn't Occupy Wall Street. No, this is Occupy <laughs> this uh, <laughs> this neighborhood to where they're pretty much, the, the military is, they're lying, they are killing, they are murdering, um, they're following orders, okay? And the National Guard is there. They're led by this uh, Lieutenant Moyers. Lieutenant Moyers is played by the actor uh, Jamie uh, McShane. And if you can imagine the governor mixed with Merle, mixed with Daryl, mixed with Eugene. <laughs> that, that's what I came up with. That's who you have, man. Um, he's a he's a bad guy, but he's funny, and he's really smart. Okay, he's really smart. He's really good at lying, and he lies, man. He lies straight through his teeth, and he's telling people that you know the people inside the neighborhood. You know that means Travis, um, uh, Maddie, Nick, Alicia, Eliza, uh, Ophelia. Chris, all of those people, he's telling each and every one of them that everything's going to be okay, along with their neighbors. Um, we found out that Travis and his family, extended and, you know, his, his, um, his brand new family with Maddie, they are in one of 12 safe zones. And these safe zones are pretty much, you know, you're locked inside of, you know, almost, let's just call it like a military base, okay? So, one of them is like Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Um, another one could be like Fort Hood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, just keep going on the list, find 12. And then if you go outside of those, um, those, those laid out um, 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 lines, you know, like the grids, they're, they're pretty much, everything's fenced off. If you go outside of that fenced off area, you're now considered uh, a threat. And the beginning of the episode, we see uh, the horrible uh, character um, <laughs> of Chris, who, who for me, I, I, I'm, I'm going to call it right now. I'm not going to call Chris's name anymore. Chris is officially Carl, okay? And I mean this 100%. Here's what I mean by this. Chris is on, on, the, on the roof of their house, okay? He's filming out and documenting this whole entire, you know, um, ending of the world, okay? And all of a sudden, you see this, this glare that is about, I'd say, maybe, let's go 10 blocks away, okay? It's off in the distance. It's coming from a house. And it's, it's in, the, in the shape or the form of an SOS using the sun, okay? So it's somebody that has a uh, piece of glass um, mirror, and they're hitting the reflection from the sun, making the SOS. He's, you know, recording this. He documents it. He tries to contact them. You know, he's so curious. He's like Curious Carl, just how Carl was inside of The Walking Dead at the beginning of the, se of the season. And even now, Carl, as a, as a damn teenager who's, who's, who's grown up and lived and survived through the beginning of the apocalypse, the zombie, you know, outbreak apocalypse, and until now, you know, Walking Dead season six... Carl is still out there playing in the woods with a girl, you know, trying to get kisses and stuff, you know, and this is what Chris is. Chris wants to ask questions, you know, hey, dad, check this out. Uh, I just found this, this, uh, this person, there's somebody out there. Do you, do you believe me? He wants to impress his dad. We understand that they have a bad relationship. You know, he's trying to build upon that, but nobody has time to go investigate, uh, you know, some, some fucking SOS, 
you know, <laughs> signal when, when, you know, the end of the world, when people are dying, man. So anyway, he tells Maddie, and everybody knows that Maddie is like this, I don't know, gun ho really, really strong, independent woman. She's not going to do anything um, except do what she wants to do, just like she did in the school. You know, you had... Um, and I forget the cut the guy's name, man. But you had the kid inside the school that was saying, uh, "Miss C, Miss C, we got to go." That that's not him. You know, it's not him. She still went over there and talked to the dude, the you know, the principal, and then almost got killed. So this is what Maddie does. She listens to Chris, aka Carl, and she goes and investigates. Yes, she goes out there and she investigates what's going on with this signal because she believes that it's it's something. And when she gets outside the perimeter of the, uh, the, you know, the 12 safe zones, out of sight of uh, safe zone number one, which is her safe zone, she cuts the fence, she walks through, all of a sudden the army surrounds her, you know, she's hiding underneath the vehicle, man. Now, what I love about this, this situation, man, let me, let me kind of back up. When she arrives into the town, or, or, the, or the, sh the block over, okay, like two or three blocks over, she, can, she, sh she starts to smell you know, the rotting flesh and the dead carcasses and pretty much she gets to smell the lies. But what I love about this is that, the you know, Kim Dickens, she's acting, you know, as, as Madison Clark. And Maddie, you know, she coughs, she almost vomits. She she sells this idea and the, pre the premise that this entire block that I'm smelling, this, this, this stink, this stench, this this unfamiliar, unnatural, you know, disgusting, you know, uh, um, uh, smell is what the world would be like, you know, you would smell the rotting flesh, you know, and, and you would smell death, and that's what she's smelling, man, it's, but in order to survive and not get caught by the army who comes over the hill, you know, because California has a lot of hills, just like if you watch, um, you know, that, that get the video game where the San Francisco has a lot of the hills and, and stuff like that. The the Humvee comes over the, the hill, and they're up at the top of the hill to where the gunner wouldn't be able to see her, necessarily, until it started going back down the hill, you know, going into her, her direction. So she drops underneath the car, and there's a dead body uh, lying next to her. Now, this dead body uh, isn't, you know, reanimated yet, because I think that... All of the bodies that we're seeing were actually, you know, headshots and, you know, were, were killed by the by the military, man, um, which is very, very fascinating because the guy, uh, this, this Lieutenant Moyers, he actually said that. He said, you know, here's the rules. Here's the breakdown. Um, curfew is in effect. You know, um, you know, you'll have rations, you'll have MREs, you'll have um, iodine, you know, make sure you're boiling your water. We'll, we'll have power, but we won't have it, you know, 24-7. It'll come on and off until we get, you know, something, you know, fixed or whatever. So here's the situation. He said, now, don't do anything stupid so I don't have to shoot you. Now, he said that jokingly, but in a sick and twisted way because that's the truth. Once Maddie went outside of the uh, perimeter... We can actually see that this is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Like, they are literally killing every single person that is not, um, that, that doesn't pass their, you know, um, prerequisites of, 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 of cured or not, okay? And what they do is, we, we heard this inside of the previous ep episode, which I think was either, um, we heard it inside of the dog. Yeah, we heard it inside of the dog, and we heard a little bit inside of So Close Yet So Far, but at the end of the dog, the guy says, and that's episode three, the dog, the, the military soldier, the soldier said, he says, uh, Has any, have any of you uh, come in contact? Have any of you come in contact with this, this, or that, you know? And what we find out, though, is that, yes, if you've come in contact, they will kill you, man. So, you know, Maddie's uh, answer was no. Um, all of a sudden, man, let me kind of, uh, I'm going to skip over, uh, um, to a, another location. Okay. This is with Nick. Nick is a junkie. He's a crackhead. Um, what he ends up doing is he takes the morphine from the morphine drip, which is inside of a living man who is dying on his deathbed. Pretty much the only thing that's keeping him alive and keeping him, um, you know, calm or whatever is, is the morphine drip. But Nick goes into his room and he takes the morphine drip and he sticks it into his, his, uh, his foot. So he's getting hot now in different locations because probably his arms are all shot up and he doesn't have any more veins or something like that um but but um nick actually you know saying um he has these um how do you want to say he has a fever and he has uh, some other things that are going on with him some issues and what ends up happening is that this doctor comes in she she has these other you know requirements where she takes your, your blood pressure she takes your temperature his temperature was fine but his heart rate was elevated, and 
Um, so she lies. She lies and says, oh, no, Nick, you're okay. You don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to take you anywhere. We don't have to take you to this place called HQ, which is headquarters. We don't have to take you to this place called the Army Hospital. And my thought was, if they're saying that they're going to take you to the HQ or the Army Hospital, I'm thinking that they're either going to kill you, they're going to murder you, or they're going to do tests on you and not let you leave that place. We will find out what these places are, the HQ, the Army Hospital, if they actually exist, because now um, Travis's uh, ex-wife, and let me go ahead and get her name because I always mess it up. Um, I believe it's, it's not Ophelia, it's Liza. Yeah, Liza has went... And she has followed Nick because Nick gets taken, okay? And um, he gets taken to this army hospital. Um, Liza's going to follow him. So we, now we have so, so fast, man. We're on, like I said, we're, we're uh, right in the middle of episode number four. Um, there's two episodes left. So now we have uh, the uh, Cobalt, which is episode five. And then we have the season finale. I think it's the six-episode um, uh, uh, six season this, this season, which is crazy. Because uh, it's going to go by so fast, man. But anyway, um, now we're going to have, starting next episode, we'll have Liza and Nick in one location with, or excuse me, Liza, Nick, um, Pop Pop, which is uh, Grandpa Salazar, and uh, uh, Griselda Salazar, okay? So you'll have um, the two, um, how do you want to say it, the two uh, uh, old people, the two old people, um, which is, you know, you know, Ruben Blades plays um, Daniel Salazar, and then uh, Patricia uh, Spindola plays uh, uh, Griselda Salazar. So Daniel, Griselda, um, Liza, and Nick will be in lo one location. Then you'll have uh, Travis, Maddie, uh, Alicia, Ophelia, and Chris in another location. So you have pretty much four and five, okay? So they're broken up and split in between that. It's going to be very interesting, man, to see what happens, man. It's really, really going to be very, very interesting, man. You know, number one, going into episode five, what is the SOS signal? Is it someone that is alive? Is it someone that is trying to set up traps? Are we already in a condition now at day nine to where people are setting up traps, you know, and we know about this in the walking dead universe, man, you never trust, <laughs> you don't trust anybody that you don't know. Okay. And even the people that you do know, you don't trust them anyway. The bottom line is you don't trust anyone. And that's the big question, man. You know, and if, if someone dies off of this, how is it going to affect, um, um, Chris, AKA Carl, how is it going to affect him? Because he is the reason why this happened. Okay. And, um, we'll be able to find all the information out, um, next episode or by the season finale. Um, let me see. What's another thing? Oh, we got introduced to new characters tonight, man. Um, one character was named Doug. Doug looks just like the dude, um, uh, Galifianakis or whatever from, um, the hangover. And I was laughing so hard, man, because like, <laughs> He was like, you know, I can't, I don't know if I can do this, you know, and Travis is trying to talk him up, man, and I felt like I was watching an episode of, um, <laughs> it looked like I was watching an episode of, uh, of the actual, um, uh, hangover, <laughs> and it was just, it was just funny, man, it was really, really funny, um, to see that, man, but what ends up happening is, um, the reason why we, we, you know, as you're watching the episode, you start questioning the HQ and questioning the Army Hospital is because, the uh, Lieutenant Moyers, um, once again played by Jamie McShane, he said that Doug was taken to HQ and no one has heard from him. They didn't notify anybody. They didn't notify the, the dude's wife, Doug's wife. So Doug's wife comes over there and she's hysterical because Doug uh, talks to, uh, Travis talks to Doug. And then now the wife's asking Travis, what did you say to him? Was it your fault that he's taken? Is it your fault that he's gone now? You know, and we will never know what happened to that. And probably until episode five or six, um, hopefully by the season finale, we'll know. But if not, you know, um, I guess it's, I guess it's no biggie. You know, I mean, I guess so. I don't really know. I hope, I hope that they figure it out. I hope that they let us know because I will really be, um, excited to, to see what happened, man. And I would like to see if, if Doug does die, I want to see him come back as a walker, as an infected. I would like to see that. Um, uh, we didn't see any new walkers. We didn't see any sort of, um, anything, nothing. This episode was purely strictly, um, um, the whole sole purpose had to be to get us inside of this brand new situation, which is martial law, show you how things are run, show you the do's and the don'ts, and then to show you that some of these characters, like Maddie, for instance, 
she has it inside of her DNA to rebel, okay? <laughs> and she will, she just does it. She's fearless, and I think that's because of her history with the death of her husband, um, Nick and his problems, and also Alicia, man. Now, that's a good segue, man. Let's talk about Alicia, and I'm going to spend a little bit of, um, 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 uh, a little bit of time on this, man. Now, Alicia is actually played by Alicia Carey, okay? And, um, this is pretty, pretty dope, man, what she's able to do tonight. Well, number one, you get to see the dynamic of how great a, an actress that she is, man. Um, Alicia's character tonight, you know, read this letter from her boyfriend, and you can feel the pain coming through her, man, as she was reading it. Um, the, the heart, if you remember on episode number one, and also a reminder again on episode number two, whenever what you call it died, her boyfriend died. Um, Alicia, um, she had this heart symbol that her boyfriend drew on her. Well, she ended up, she, she tattooed this into her arm tonight, man. And you can just feel the pain, man, the suffering. But she's such a strong character. Nick and uh, Maddie get into a fight. And the reason they get into a fight is because Nick has been going around... Um, trying to to score okay and this is after maddie returned from outside of the wire and i'm using that terminology because it's almost like iraq <laughs> it really it really is it feels like it's it's an iraq man and um <laughs> there's nothing really that she can that she can do man but uh <laughs> besides like you know laugh at it because it it really is it's really really intense stuff man so um maddie beats nick down she she gives him an old-fashioned ass whooping and, and I, I i applauded this woman because i was like you know about time man that you know parents get back to you know if your son or daughter needs an ass whooping you give them that ass whooping so that society doesn't have to give them that ass whooping you know by placing your your son or daughter in jail in prison um and to be part of the problem man. be part of the solution man get them back to being you know active you know working members of society that are doing something you know to contribute to the betterment of the world man and i love that i applaud the walking dead for that i applaud uh, amc for that I, I applaud fear the walking dead i just thought it was really really good and i think that kim dickens man she deserves something for this man some sort of nomination or something because she gave she gave it man you know and that was what was missing you know and i go back to this again Lori, Lori grimes didn't give anything to carl and that's why carl started talking back and giving lip to his dad you know what i'm saying when his dad was hurt he was like carl you know rick grimes carl wait up hold on carl and he just kept walking he kept walking you know and that's why carl kept breaking down all the time you know because he just he never got that ass whooped man he never got that ass whooped shane wasn't doing nothing shane was just boning the lorry he was he was tearing them guts up you know what i'm saying while rick was in a coma you know he wasn't <laughs> He wasn't doing anything. He wasn't. He wasn't parenting Carl, and uh, that's what Kim did, man. Tonight, you know, aka Madison, you know, Madison Clark. She did it, man. She did it. She beat Nick, and then after that, Nick, um, you know, he wanted a moment alone, you know, but he also wanted someone to be there for him. He didn't want Travis because, you know, hey, that's the stepdad. But he allowed um, Alicia to come in, and that's where you get this moment where, you know, Alicia just embraces Nick, allows Nick to cry, and then, you know, Nick is torn away from Alicia because. Uh, right after that moment where they where they held each other and she said everything's gonna be okay you know i got you you know the army came in they took nick and then they hauled him off to this army hospital where you know he has the potential to be murdered and we'll see what happens man and how that's going to affect alicia's character also man like i said guys you know the walking dead is a really great show but i think that fear the walking dead you know starting with the beginning and also having such a fresh take on everything everything is brand new um what they can do with this show it's leaps and bounds over the what the walking dead can give us man you know the walking dead can only go so far and i think that they understand that too obviously i want the walking dead to last you know forever as long as the actors and actresses and new talent comes in they can keep this thing going for you know 10 15 20 years if they wanted to and i think that the audience will continue to watch it also um at least 10 seasons i know that for sure it can definitely go 15 if we wanted it to but i don't think it's going to go that way the only way that i can see it happening is that well, like they were talking about, eventually during season two, which would be The Walking Dead season seven, they're going to have a character from Fear the Walking Dead, you know, cross over into The Walking Dead. So we'll have to see what happens. My 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 hope is that they don't do Cliff Curtis and they don't do Kim Dickens. 
And the reason why I say that is because Cliff Curtis had a TV show back in the day, and not too far back in the day, but his track record with looking old and putting on what I call old face in this television series called uh, Gang Related. And that was in 2014, you know, which was last year, but it seemed like, I don't know, that, that seemed like it was so far behind or, or so long ago. But anyway, he played this guy, man, called um, uh, Javier Acosta. And uh, Javier, man, inside of Gang Related was like this older guy, man. It just didn't go over well, man. They, they What they ended up doing is they had, you know, Cliff Curtis, they had him either, um, A, they had him t to where he would have to... Um, dye his hair, or they would have it to where he somehow, um, you know, got, got put, uh, uh special effects or, or not special effects, but makeup on his face. And I don't think that that's going to be a good look, man. I'm looking at his birthday right now and that's 19, let me see, 1960, um, is it 1968? Yeah, 1968, man. That puts him just shy of 50 years old, about 47 years old. Uh, I believe, if my math is correct, it should be. Um, if I'm doing, if I'm, if I'm thinking about this, this thing, man. Um, obviously, you know, Cliff Curtis is a great act actor. You know what I'm saying, and also, you know, Kim Dickens is a great actress. But who I would do, and what I would do is, I would have uh, Frank um, uh, Delane, aka Nick. I would have him cross over or Alicia. And if they wanted to, you know, bring more diversity, obviously, you know, um, they would bring in, you know, probably. Um, I could see Liza doing it because she can put on a little bit of older makeup, you know what I'm saying? And Ophelia, um, probably her also. They can, they can probably, you know, um, cross over. But what would be really interesting, man, and what would obviously work the, the, the most and the, and, the, and the greatest is to give uh, Ruben Blades, who plays uh, Daniel Salazar, since it seems like that character, Daniel Salazar, is the one that's going to survive, you know, because he's been through so much shit in his life. So we'll see what happens, guys. Um, I'm actually waiting right now to see... If um, Tatiana has won, and uh, yes, she just won, bro. She she won. Okay, go my. Okay, I'm out of here, guys. That's it, man. Hey, get, comment, like, subscribe, share this video, and we're out of here.